Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips, which is brought to you by Wellness Form Health and the Wellness Form Institute. Take note of my new shirt. I'm a data girl. Um, when people ask me, like, what kind of healthcare do you guys practice and what kind of healthcare professional are you? I have often said throughout the years, I'm a data girl, and I've always wanted a shirt that says this. And fortunately, a good friend and colleague sent it to me. So thank you so much to her. And I think that we should all become data girls and data boys because that's the way that healthcare should be practiced. So let's get started. Um, first, an announcement uh, about our annual Christmas in July special offer. Only two weeks left and we may cut it off. We're getting dangerously close to the 50 per program that the smoothie mix purchase qualifies for. So here's the way it works. You purchase a six month supply of our smoothie ingredients. You get two and a half times that much credit toward two of four programs, Optimal Life and Health with Pam Part 1, Optimal Life and Health with Pam Part 2, Common Conditions, Causes and Treatments Part 1 and Part 2. These are weekend boot camp um, uh, workshops. We record them so that if the hours don't work out, you can't join live, you can watch the recordings and you'll have access to those. The common causes and treatments, I'm going to cover a lot of stuff I haven't covered before, like fibromyalgia and food allergies and sensitivities and AFib and migraines and restless leg and thyroid and um, hemorrhoids and depression and anxiety, a whole bunch of stuff. So if you are interested in this, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com and I will send you a flyer that describes everything and tells you exactly how it works. So you get two and you make an investment, get two and a half times that much back in tuition credits for uh, up to all of them. You can buy a year's worth of smoothie supplies if you want to. Uh, so let's get into some health news. And um, I get great feedback when I cover uh, things that subscribers write to me about. So I'm going to start by answering an email from a subscriber who writes, I'm a 54 year old man who currently takes no drugs. I recently visited my general practitioner. He ordered a blood test. My total cholesterol is 195 LDL 120. My doctor tells me that a risk calculator shows I'm at high risk and should take a statin. And also that he's concerned about my HDL cholesterol being so low. What do you think I should do? He wants me to take the statin. I'm hesitant. So what to do? All right, here's my response. So I'm going to start with the usual caveat that I don't have any other information on this person. So we can only just take this at face value and answer in general terms. And I'm also going to note that our uh, subscriber is unusual in that um, he is in um He's in great health from the standpoint of not taking any meds at the age of 54. We don't see very many people uh, in uh, wellness form becoming new members who take no meds at that age. So I think that we want to say congratulations and let's try to keep it that way. So here goes. First, uh, to the subscriber, your cholesterol is high and it does warrant attention. If you join wellness form, you'll have access to our library so you can read about the connection between plasma cholesterol and coronary artery disease. There are some people who say that this doesn't exist, but there is a connection. The relationship is significant. Dozens upon dozens upon dozens of studies show it. Um, there are some industry sponsored studies that don't, but dozens of studies that are independent show that connection and it's dose dependent. The higher your plasma cholesterol, the higher your risk. Second, well-referenced articles in our library show that statin drugs when used for primary prevention which means no history of either events or interventional cardiology have little value. They'll reduce the risk of an event by less than 1% and there are side effects and some of those side effects are serious for some people. Third, and this is really important, the risk calculators used to determine who should take a statin are very flawed. In 2013, for example, the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association adjusted their guidelines based on the development of new risk calculators, which served to broaden the market for statin drugs. Based on the revision that was done back then, it was estimated that an additional 12.8 million American adults in, in our country would be eligible to take statin drugs with most of the increase in older adults who did not have cardiovascular disease or risk factors for it real risk factors. A key issue really is the validity of the risk calculators, which were de determined to be highly flawed. 
One research group reported that four out of five scores used in the calculator overestimated the risk of expected events by between 25% and 115%. As a result of the changed guidelines, the number of people taking statins did increase, but the value of the drugs for people, most of the people who were in that increased group was almost zero. One study showed that taking Lipitor reduced the risk of a heart attack by only 1.1%. Another study showed that taking Lipitor extended lifespan by an average of only three to four days. And remember, there are side effects. And most people, if they knew what the side effects were and they knew of what little value the drug is for primary prevention, they probably would opt not to take it. Fourth, HDL levels are irrelevant. Referenced articles in our library show that the ratio of HDL to LDL is not a marker for health and that attempts to increase HDL both with supplements and with uh, drugs consistently leads to worsening health outcomes. Statins are clearly useless for you, my subscriber, but having said this, doing nothing in your situation is also not advisable. Most people can lower their cholesterol with diet change easily and actually pretty quickly. A lower fat diet because high fat eating contributes to higher cholesterol levels, along with less animal food intake and increased higher fiber plant foods usually gets the job done. I'll add that if your diet is optimal and you're hydrated and you exercise and maintain a healthy weight, you're not likely to have a cardiac event, even if your cholesterol remains slightly higher than optimal. So um, lots to unpack there, but the bottom line is that for primary prevention, statin drugs are generally not a good option unless you have familial hypercholesterolemia, which is a hereditary disease that causes your body to produce enormous amounts of cholesterol regardless of your diet. But the makers of statin drugs can't make billions of dollars only offering the drugs to people like that. So we have to broaden the market. You've heard me talk about this for a long, long time. All right, quick announcement for health professionals. Business training starts September 16th. So if you are interested in learning how to market yourself, to become a good uh, developer of programming, to learn how to make presentations and um, build your business and become profitable and plan and teach educational programs and increase your, improve your communication skills, this course is for you. It's a nine module course. There is a lot of homework because you actually have to not only learn how to do these things, but demonstrate that you have learned how to do them. You get to make class presentations and all that sort of thing. So um, I'll show you how to make money at your healthcare business. We know how to, we can show you how to as well. And uh, a couple people emailed me over the weekend to ask if they could still enroll in the diet and lifestyle intervention program, even though um, uh, the class started, the course started last Wednesday. And you can, you'll just watch the reported version of last Wednesday's class and join the live version this week. So we can squeeze a couple more people in if you choose to do that. All right, the second news item I wanna talk about is fibromyalgia, which we will be discussing in the common conditions classes this fall, but I'll share a couple, just one new news tidbit with you that I think is kind of important. Uh, fibromyalgia is associated with pervasive pain and high levels of neg negative affect. Negative affect refers to a group of emotional states that includes but is not limited to anxiety and depression and stress and sadness, worry, guilt, and anger. A new study shows that pain can be reduced by addressing the negative affect aspect of the condition. 98 women were randomly assigned to eight weeks of individual sessions of cognitive behavioral therapy or a basic fibromyalgia education group. The results, patients assigned to the CBT group had significant reductions in pain as compared to patients in the basic education group. The reductions in pain were partially attributed to reductions in catastrophizing and brain imaging even showed changed neural circuitry associated with pain. For fibromyalgia patients, catastrophizing is a significant contributor to pain and the perception of pain. Now, to be clear, the pain is very real for fibromyalgia patients, but psychological state is a contributor to the pain and to pain severity. CBT is one of the tools that can lead to rapid improvement for patients. So the fibromyalgia patient who wants to get well can get well, but often is distracted by a lot of alternative mumbo jumbo and supplements and um, all kinds of incorrect theories about what's really going on and that sort of thing. So we'll be talking about that in the common, and common causes and conditions um, workshops that are coming up this fall. 
And last but not least, a reminder, our annual Prevent Cancer campaign starts right after Labor Day. And some of you are familiar with it. You sign our Prevent Cancer Pledge. We give you um, right then a $100 voucher that you can use for things like conference tickets, winner's circle. I'm going to offer that again because so many people are telling me that they want to take it. They've heard from friends that are taking it, love it, um, and several other wellness form health programs. You will also be able to get pledges from other people and, and, and earn points to take free classes. We try to make it as easy as possible to take the classes that they want to with us. And then um, I am going to do um, a prevent cancer workshop. I'll offer it two or three different times for anybody who signs the pledge that covers everything from the disease mongering screening racket to um, some basics of what to do if you're diagnosed with cancer. So we'll talk about preventing cancer. We'll talk about not getting sucked into the cancer prevention or early detection mill, and then what to do should you or a family member uh, be diagnosed with cancer. So that will be right after Labor Day. So I'll include some more details in next week's video. All right, that's it for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you on Thursday with more news. Thank you for watching.